How do you know that girls are going to get their period soon? You asked, the gynecologist answers to the topic of period. When can I calculate my cycle again after breastfeeding or while breastfeeding? Why is the blood sometimes very clumpy? Why does the color change? Why is it that when the hormones are low during the changing years, you can still have very strong bleeding? I have answered many, many questions. The answers are now available. I wish you a lot of fun with the video. So, first of all, how do you get to the community button, that you can also ask a few questions. It's relatively simple, if you're on my channel, there is a tab at the top called community. And here I do surveys, send a few pictures, information and sometimes I also do a question round. And this time it's about the period. And we start right away with question number one. What does it depend on how quickly you get your period back after a pregnancy? Breastfeeding, genetic modification, and are there signs that the bleeding will start soon? You have already mentioned a few points, so it's very, very important whether you breastfeed and how much you breastfeed. Because you have a hormone in every breastfeeding, it's called prolactin, and prolactin does nothing more than keeping the other hormones low. It's kind of intended that way, because if you breastfeed a child, then of course you don't have any energy for another pregnancy. That's how it is to explain it a little bit in terms of evolution. And that's why the body says, of course, in most cases, no way, I don't want to have a cycle anymore. There are women, I know, who complete, from day to week, I don't know, four, five, they already have a cycle again. There is, but it's the exception. In fact, it is so that even if you are just knocking once at night or twice at night, the child is just to calm down or just for the sake of proximity, it may be that you still don't get a cycle. The question is always, can I somehow accelerate it so that the cycle comes back? No, you really shouldn't breastfeed. And there should be no reason to stop, just because you want to have a cycle again. Are there signs? Yes, the first signs are that cervical mucosa is increasing again. So the vaginal secretion, which you sometimes find in the mucus in the evening, that will be a little more again at some point. So that you notice, oh, now something is happening hormonally again. The breasts can also tense. And there are also the classic symptoms of complaints. Just before the period, for example, or also a pull in the lower body, that you think, oh, tomorrow it starts, but then nothing comes. But these are already the first prohibitions that it could start again soon. But good question. Next question. Why is there no period holiday in Germany? I always skip at least one day because of the cramps with vomiting. I have now infected my employer, which is why I miss exactly every four weeks, which was really uncomfortable for him. Yes, the men, they are a little more careful there. I think it's a shame to be ridiculed by colleagues, also in pregnancy. What you could listen to everything. Just a few days of vacation with women's complaints. Yes, I can actually only advise you one thing. To watch the video up here. Because I have already explicitly talked about it. There are countries in which there is this so-called period holiday. And we also talk about this word period holiday. Because that implies a little bit that you are lying in the hammock and slurping cocktails while you have such severe complaints as you do. And that makes a wrong picture again on these women's complaints that you mentioned. So it is a point that has brought a lot of controversies with it. Now not only in the positive, but also in the negative sense. Basically, I agree with you. There are women, and I think it's a shame that you yourself are ridiculed by your colleagues, who just have insane problems. And accordingly are not good at their work. And it would certainly make more sense if you use this time differently. And there are also work constellations that you can prepare from the home office or some lectures without having to go to the office now. But yes, big topic. Feel free to watch the video. I really talk about this in great detail. Good question. Why does progesterone deficiency cause complaints in the second phase of the cycle, but not in the first? Although the level in the first phase is also totally low. Great question, but I can explain it relatively quickly. Because it is not about the absolute value that a hormone has, but about the dynamics of the hormone. And you know, if you should already know a little bit about it, and I can also show it to you, that the progesterone cycle is very low. That's what you mentioned. Then it goes up in the second phase of the cycle and does not come to a pregnancy. Then it slides off quickly. And the body just doesn't like that. The female and also the male do not. The body likes when something is constant. And that's why women also have a lot of problems shortly before or later in the changing years. Because that's exactly what happens there. The hormones go up and down. And that causes a lot of complaints. In contrast, a woman under the age of 70 will hardly suffer from complications during the changing years, because the two hormones or the three hormones are at zero level. And the body still has a lack of hormones, but gets used to it completely, because it's such a steady state status. So the body doesn't like this dynamic. And that's why many women also have problems in the second phase of the cycle, when progesterone runs out. 
And in most cases, an estrogen dominance also arises. I already made a video about this, or I will do it again. I don't know, depending on how much time I bring with me today. If I've already done it, you can take a look at it. If not, then you have to wait a moment. But this estrogen dominance also makes these typical complaints short before the period. And it's not about the absolute value of a hormone, but the dynamics. I have a strong period bleeding. Also a uterus bicornis with unevenly large horns. The hormone spiral was removed yesterday, because it unfortunately could not anchor. Now my gynecologist said, probably said, said my gynecologist, that the Ginefix pulp chain might be something. But does it not strengthen the bleeding? Yes. So I think the second question can be answered directly, that if you are already suffering from severe bleeding, then a pulp chain or a pulp spiral does not make much sense in my eyes. Because that can actually potentiate and strengthen the whole thing again. And that somehow doesn't make sense. To pick everyone up, what is a uterus bicornis anyway? So a uterus that has two horns. And that looks like this. If you imagine a uterus in the shape of a pear, I can also show you a picture, then a uterus bicornis is like a heart. And depending on how long this septum is here, it can really be two horns, or it's really just a heart-shaped, a heart-shaped uterus. And of course it also causes less problems. In childbirth, but also in pregnancy, after pregnancy and also in period bleeding. In your case, you have to look, what kind of bicornis it is. Is it really a very pronounced one? Maybe you can resuscitate this septum operatively here, so that you have fewer of these problems. Because that's also clear, such a uterus can't get together that well, if there's a septum in the middle that's bothering you. That's why you probably have this strong bleeding. Now I don't know you, it may be that you have a memory disorder. It may be that you take medication. It may be that you have a hormonal problem. That's why I can't tell you a solution from afar. But so much has perhaps already been said. Take a look at it again. Or talk to your gynecologist about whether you can possibly resuscitate this septum operatively. I don't know how old you are. Maybe there's still a desire for children. That would definitely make things a lot easier. Just as a little tip. Next question. Alternating years. Why do the bleeding suddenly get stronger? There are fewer hormones active. Great question. And we've actually already answered that. If you've been paying attention, you know for sure now. Yes, alternating years is a long period of time, over decades. But just before this so-called menopause, i.e. the last bleeding that took place, this phase is mainly characterized by hormone chaos. There are weeks when everything is great. Then you have a Swiss clockwork again. There are weeks that are catastrophic. Because the hormones, they do go, if you zoom out over a long view, down. There are always these beautiful graphics like estrogen and progesterone go down. But if you zoom in, these are actually sine curves. So the hormones go up and down. And that's what makes such a hormone imbalance with an estrogen dominance. There we are again. And that's why a lot of mucus builds up in the uterus. And that's why it often leads to very strong, very long bleeding, which is why these women often benefit from this gold net method. A little operational intervention. I can build you another one up here. You are welcome to watch the video again. So yes, that's the reason. Because the hormones are not right below, but first cause chaos. How do I know that my daughter will soon have her period? That's a good question. That's what you hear from the concerned parents. I don't know if mom or dad. So there is no real indication that next week the period will start with the daughter. It is always said that if the breast growth starts a year later, such a Faust formula, the period starts. So the breast is before the period. So if your daughter is 10, 11, 12 years old and the breast has already grown, then it can be that soon. And then of course it's high time to clear up the whole thing with your daughter. Because it's always stupid when you suddenly stand there, you bleed and you don't know what's going on at all. Then I can highly recommend the Weisbescheid family. I would like to link it to you in the comments below. The Weisbescheid family clarifies exactly these topics from 0 years to 12, 13, 14 years, so that you know exactly what is normal, what do I have to do when it's time, and so on and so forth. But yes, pay attention to it. Which can also be that you find more cervix mucus in the larynx. So if you somehow take your daughter out in the evening or take her out yourself and put the underpants somewhere in the corner and you see there is already this white film that you will probably know from yourself. 
Yes, it may be that these are the first prohibitions. The so-called white liquid is nothing more than the cervix mucus, which slowly starts to flow due to hormones. Next question. Clumpy blood during the period. Is that normal or what does it indicate? Before the period, extreme night sweats, often a tingling feeling, also a fibrous feeling. Is that normal? Thank you for the many great videos. Very, very much. So these are a few questions in one question. First of all, this clumpy blood is also called coagulation. Blood has the habit of shrinking in the body, in part. And that's what you sometimes notice as clumps, where you get scared because it suddenly makes a plop or a splash. Sometimes it looks like liver. It can be as big as a coin, even bigger, that such coagulation occurs. It is nothing more than blood accumulating in the uterus. The clumping factors are already a bit active and that's why there is such a, so to speak, a small, slimy ball of blood. It's nothing else. And that comes out. Is that normal? Basically, it shouldn't be. Because something is wrong here. Either the drainage is not correct via the vagina or it is not correct in terms of clumping, that there is a clumping disorder, or you bleed very, very hard. That means, again, the bleeding is so strong that the body can't keep up and shrinks immediately. So these are things that should already be clarified. If that happens once, well, you can have something hormonal, a hormonal imbalance behind it. But if that has piled up or has been going on for a lifetime, then you should definitely clarify it on all the facets and all the levels that I have just briefly touched on. So, now we come to the menstrual flu. You may have heard the term. So, menstrual flu in good German. And that is actually a phenomenon that exists and which is not so rare, which is not really explainable. It has to have something to do with the hormones. That is clear, because estrogen and progesterone also have an impact on the immune system. And here it seems to come to an excess of the immune reaction, so that many women feel totally itchy, sick while or shortly before the period. And when the period is over, it also appears again completely. You even have real fever sometimes. And it's called menstrual flu. You are welcome to Google it. I would also like to make a video about it. If you want that, then just write it to me in the comments. And if that is often desired, then I will address the topic. But I can say so much in advance. It's not really scientifically super explained yet. But this explanation with the hormones and the excess reaction of the immune system, that's behind it. And here, too, I would just clarify what's going on. Something could be happening to you hormonally. I don't know how old you are now. Maybe you are 46 or 47. And it's slowly going into this hormone chaos, which I have already mentioned two or three times. So, I don't want to overdo it. These were a few questions. First of all, I would like to thank all the questioners. And if you have any more questions about the period, then please write it in the comments. And don't forget to take a look in the community tab when the next topic arises. Because I will do that very regularly now. Otherwise, I have chosen two classic videos for you. Once the strong bleeding, if you are interested. And maybe the topic, when does it actually start with the changing years? Because it starts earlier than you might think. I will link it down here. And you are welcome to leave a subscription, so that I can help you to help yourself better. See you in the next video. Until then, bye.